Today I'm behind a wheel of a brand new 2021 Honda Ridgeline and for this year Honda addressed the biggest complaint about the Honda Ridgeline and that is the exterior looks. The exterior received a big upgrade for 2021 and in addition on the inside Honda also addressed a few other little things and made it even better. So just how good is this brand new Honda Ridgeline? Well keep watching and find out. First, I want to give a big thanks to Honda of Lao, which made this video possible. So if you're in the market for a brand new or used Honda, make sure you check them out. Their URL is in the description below. So first, let me talk about all the changes to this brand new Ridgeline, starting with the outside. Ever since the second generation of Honda Ridgeline was introduced, people complained about the exterior looks, specifically the front end, which had a very curvy and round look. It looked very similar to the Honda Pilot and very similar to even the Honda Odyssey, which turned off a lot of truck buyers. Truck buyers want an aggressive and bold look, and that is what Honda did for this year. Completely changed the front end. Everything from the cabin forward is completely new. And with the sport trim, which is the base trim, everything is blacked out in a good way. So you could see that large trim bar that goes from one headlight to the other on top of the grill. It is blackened out, right? And the grill is also blackened out. Now the lower bumper has been redesigned too. You still have a lot of black cladding to add a little bit of ruggedness, but Honda added a lot more slits and air vents and the grill openings. So it does look a little bit busier. However, I think the whole look is significantly better than the previous 2020 model. Now the headlights have also been redesigned. They're bigger, it matches the front end a little bit better. You still have daytime running lights. Unfortunately on the sport trim, you're getting halogen headlights and underneath you do get fog lights. Now moving to the side, the profile of the Ridgeline pretty much stays the same, but it does look a little bit better because the front end is more upright and more squared. Now there is one other significant change and that is with the wheels. So Honda decided to push out the wheels a little bit further so they're more flush with the fender so it doesn't look like the wheels are very small or the top is too top heavy. And the tires are more aggressive. They're all terrain tires but they have a really aggressive uh, wheel design and pattern so it does look a little bit more rugged. And on this sport trim you get this dark silver 18 inch alloy wheels. Now this one I'm driving comes with additional package which adds on roof rails and also side steps. In my opinion, the roof rails look pretty good, but the side steps is not necessary because the ridge line isn't very tall. However, if, uh, if you did have kids or if you were on a shorter side, I could see how they can help get in and out. Now moving to the back side, still looks like a ridge line, but the biggest difference has to be what's on the bottom and that is the dual chrome exhaust tips. They definitely stand out definitely gives the ridge line a bit more ruggedness. Now what didn't change in the back is the tailgate, the bed, and the trunk, and that's fantastic. Starting with a dual action tailgate, it can open down like a normal tailgate. I will say that it is uh, very heavy, it's not dampened, so it tends to just slam down. But you can also open it sideways, which makes it very, very easy for you to get into the bed and get access to the bed. Now the bed is covered in the composite materials, so you don't have to worry about bed liner or anything getting scratched or dented. It's a very, very, very heavy duty composite material. There's a few tie downs on the side, no rail system, that's about it. Now what makes the Ridgeline really unique is the in-bed trunk. Yes, if you open up the bottom cover, you will see a massive trunk underneath. There are some dividers, but overall this trunk space is huge. It's a lot bigger than what it looks. You could fit many, many, many bags of groceries. And also you can have a tailgate party, fill it with ice, and you could drain it out afterwards. Also the spare tire and the jack is hidden under there too. Now moving inside, the Ridgeline provides the most space of any mid-sized truck, which is fantastic for those of you guys that plan on using this truck uh, as a daily driver. In the second row, I'm 5 feet 10, I have about 2 inches of legroom, about 2 to 3 inches of headroom, so as you can see, I can fit just fine, and for those of you guys that have kids, car seats, they fit just fine as well. And the rear seats do fold up, so if you want to put something back there like a bike or a TV, you can. Now moving on front, there are a few changes as well. 
Started with the steering wheel because this is a sport trim. The steering wheel is not leather, but overall it has a good design. There's buttons on the left and right side, and you do see uh, paddle shifters in the back. That's because the Ridgeline, ever since it received a nine-speed transmission, Honda decided to add paddle shifters. Not that you really need paddle shifters, but you do get them. Now the gauge cluster hasn't changed. You have dual analog gauges, also dual digital screens. One is a digital speedometer, and then you have one that gives you essential stuff like trip computer and tire pressure, oil life. Now moving the infotainment system, this is the biggest change on the inside for the Ridgeline. First, you'll see that the volume knob is back. Yes, now Honda decided to put it back which is really, really nice. And this is the standard screen now. You have an eight inch screen and the interface has been updated. So rather than get a small five inch screen that didn't really have a whole bunch of functions in there, this one works a lot better. And this eight inch is great, especially when you're backing up, you can see what's behind you with the rear camera. It definitely does make a difference. And also the responsiveness and graphics are okay. Not the most modern or most responsive setup, now moving below, you have tri-zone climate control, which is nice, pretty easy to figure out. You do have button style shifting, and Honda made that change a year ago, so you do have to get used to it with a new nine-speed transmission. Not only do you get the paddle shifters, but you get this button style. Um, you know what, you just have to settle with it because all Hondas are moving in this direction. All right, I'm off. Let's see how good this brand new Ridgeline is and see how it drives. To start out, I'm very, very familiar with the second generation of Honda Ridgeline, and that's because I was a previous owner. I had a 2018, I leased it for three years, and I returned it not too long ago, but I daily drove the Ridgeline, and I loved it. I loved it. And the reason why I picked out the Ridgeline is simply because it is the best midsize truck to get if you plan on daily driving it. That It's as simple as that. Every reviewer, every columnist, every person that has reviewed the Ridgeline loves it, except, except it didn't look like a truck. And I'm glad to see Honda finally decided to do something about it. So I already showed you guys and talked about the outside, but Honda listened. They decided to fix up the outside. Now the first generation Ridgeline, uh, there's a loyal following and it did look more square and butch, but it had a really weird bed design, right? The second generation fixed that, but the front end was just really bubbly and round and people hate it, especially men. You know, men that drive trucks, they have to be like really masculine all the time, right? And they couldn't stand driving a Ridgeline around, but you know, like for me, you know, I didn't mind so much. I did make some upgrades. I added a, a leveling kit, put on bigger tires, bigger wheels, and it made a big difference. However, with this new front end with a dual chrome exhaust tips and with the stock wheels and tires upgraded, I think even stock, it looks pretty darn good. Okay, so I just accelerated from about 15 to 60 miles per hour and it's pretty good. It's pretty good and this is another reason why the Ridgeline is great as a daily driver because of this powertrain combination. Under the hood, you have a 3.5 liter V6, tried and true V6, producing 280 horsepower and it is made it to a nine speed automatic. Now before, the one I had was made to a six speed automatic, which I liked a little better. There's just less going on, less shifting, and, and overall it was pretty good. But Honda decided to make the change to the nine speed. They have been improving upon the nine speed. And now you do have paddle shifters if you want to uh, control and shift your rich line manually. But overall, I think the nine speed is pretty good too. Fuel economy isn't bad overall, combined about 21 miles per gallon. And in terms of acceleration, it's among the best, if not the best, for mid-sized trucks. Surprisingly, you know, all the manufacturers with the big horsepower engines are all reserved for full-size trucks. For mid-sized trucks, there's not a whole lot that's actually very fun and exciting, but this combination provides very good acceleration, thrust, and passing speed whenever you, you need to do any of those things with the Ridgeline. Now, besides the terrific powertrain, the Ridgeline is very quiet and very comfortable around town, which is why it's such a great 
daily driver. The suspension is soft, which means that you can pretty much go over anything and the suspension will just soak it up, right? It's not as soft as some of the bigger SUVs or trucks, but it's soft enough. And when you're taking corners and bends, yeah, you'll get some body roll, but overall, it's very, very comfortable. And also, surprisingly, the seats up here are comfortable. This is a sport trim, so you're not getting leather, and this is cloth, but I'll tell you, I lived with these seats for three years, and they're very comfortable. They're supportive, and the bottom cushion, and the bolsters, everything about it is just right. So, no complaints about these seats. And with these new tires, even though they're all train tires, a little bit more aggressive, I'm surprised you know, they don't feel any harsher. I can't hear any road noise, so they're not any louder either. So I think Honda did a good job uh, finding the right tires to match the suspension overall. The, the Ridgeline is also quiet. When you're driving around town, it feels like you're you're in, you know, a three row SUV. It's as quiet as a Pilot or, or any of the other big SUVs out there. So that's really nice. Makes conversations really easy inside. You don't really hear much. Uh, wind noise, road noise, cars passing by, very minimal and very little from the exhaust and engine too. So overall, very quiet in here. Now as for space, this is as big as you can get for a mid-size truck. All the other mid-size trucks out there, for some reason, they just feel small. There's just not a lot of room on the inside, but the Ridgeline is different. This is almost like a three-quarter size of a full-size truck. So there's plenty of width. Plenty of headroom, legroom, uh, shoulder room, hip room, plenty of that. And I already showed you guys the second row, right? Adults could fit back there. Trust me, I had two big car seats in the back. The kids fit back there just fine. So there's plenty of room in the back and up front too. And you do get a good elevated position, but not as high as a midsize truck, but it's fairly high off the ground. Um, and you know what? Because of it, you get a good command and view. Visibility is fantastic everywhere. The front windshield is enormous. Side windows are enormous. Rear window, not as big, but still pretty good. And rear visibility is fantastic too. So you get a good command and view and visibility is really, really good. Speaking of which, you do see there's a lot of snow out. With the Ridgeline, you can select front wheel drive or all wheel drive. And with all wheel drive, there is terrain management. So there's normal snow, mud, and sand. Depending on what you select, the Ridgeline will tweak its all wheel drive system, tweak the traction control, and it could turn on the electronically locking rear differential too. So with all that, you could pretty much go anywhere. I've never gotten stuck in my Ridgeline, even in some hairy situations with mud and snow. I've always made it out just fine. Now, as I'm coming to a stop, the Ridgeline brakes are good. They're predictable. The pedal has that linear feel and there's nothing, nothing strange about the brakes. Just one thing is because the Ridgeline suspension is a little bit softer, so if you come to a stop really quickly, you'll feel that nose dive down a little bit. But outside of that, the, the brakes feel very, very good. Now, of course, the Honda Ridgeline can't tackle off-road like the Jeep Gladiator or the Toyota Tacoma. This was not designed to do that. It doesn't have the ground clearance or the off-road parts, the aftermarket parts, or even some of the features like sway bar disconnect, stuff like that, right? But when you're talking about a truck that you want to drive every day, you simply can't beat a Honda Ridgeline. This is a fantastic mid-size truck and for those of you guys that want something that's a little bit smaller than a full-size truck because it is hard to manage a full-size truck uh, depending on where you live, this is the perfect balance. It gives you the space that you want on the inside, a usable trunk on the outside. You have that usable bed as well and also everything about this Ridgeline in terms of how it drives, you know, fuel economy, the visibility, everything about it is just fantastic. So next up, let me talk about the trim levels and pricing and sum up the good and bad about this brand new 2021 Honda Ridgeline so you could decide if this is the right truck for you. As for trim levels, there are four to the brand new Ridgeline. The base is the Sport and that's what I'm driving today and it starts around $36,500. 
Then you have the RTL, RTL-E, and finally the range topping black edition, which starts a tad under $44,000. To conclude, the 2021 Honda Ridgeline is a great refresh for the second generation of the Ridgeline. The bold new front end makes a huge difference to the Ridgeline and makes it look less like a pilot and more like its own truck. The new wheels, the more aggressive tires, along with the new dual exhaust tips also make the Ridgeline more like a truck. The fantastic dual action tailgate along with the hidden trunk is the best in this class. The bed is the widest in this class and provides a composite finish so you could throw whatever you want back there without worrying about dents or scratches. The inside of the Ridgeline is also the most spacious in this class and adults and kids can fit in the second row just fine. Up front, the new infotainment system along with the return the volume knob are fantastic upgrades for this year. Finally, the Ridgeline provides a high commanding drive that is comfortable, quiet, and provides plenty of acceleration anytime you need it. As for the bad, I do find the old 6-speed transmission to be a little bit better than the new 9-speed. Also, the Ridgeline doesn't have the greatest ground clearance nor the off-road equipment that some of the competitors offer. Lastly, the upper trims of Ridgeline can get pricey. Overall, I'm giving the brand new 2021 Honda Ridgeline Sport a score of 105. To see where it ranks among its peers, check out driversonlyrankings.com. Thanks for watching, hit the like and subscribe to the channel, and check out these two other videos.